Hi everyone, good morning. I know it's super early. Um, yesterday I did a live on um, an introduction to brushes and I had worked yesterday and I had been rushing and I feel like that was just not a very good um, live. <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out where it went. I was trying to delete it and I accidentally hit it. So um, kind of disregard that one. Um, from yesterday. <laughs> so I'm trying to get this to, there we go. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to kind of try to do a new start over live. <laughs> um, kind of as an introduction into brushes. And so um, what I was originally planning was to do like a two hour workshop where I go through all these brushes. And I just feel like that's too much information, especially if you're just starting out. Um, if you've paint like as a beginner or if you've never painted before, that's just going to overwhelm you and you're going to be like, uh-uh, can't do it. And so, um, I just wanted to kind of do a brief overview and then also kind of just give you, um, kind of show you what each brush does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, just do an overview of the three different types of brushes that there are um, available. And then I'm gonna sh talk about flat brushes today. So each week um, I'm going to talk about a different brush. So today will be flat brush, next week will probably be round brush and etc. cetera. Um, you know, I'll start with the first kind of four major brushes and then from there, I'll do more specialty kind of brushes. So um, if you are on this early in the morning, it's like six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, um, you know, come on and say hi. Um, I'm gonna try again to see the comments. I sem somehow am never able to do that. So, um, but anyway, so I apologize yesterday if you watched that. It's a total, <laughs> mess of a live, so disregard. But anyway, um, as far as this introduction to brushes, um, in my opinion, when you're starting to paint or learning how to paint, a lot of people say that you should learn paints and colors first. And I disagree with that. I think that should be second because you really need to know your tools, which are your brushes, before you learn color. And so that's what this kind of series that I'm doing about brushes is about because you need to know how to use um, your tools, your brushes. You need to know how they, how they work and what kind of strokes you can get before you even start because really, um, just from my experience, the type of brush you use can make or break what you're painting if you don't know how to use it correctly. Um, and that's just for my own failures. <laughs> um, when you are trying to do different like flowers or, or leaves or you know whatever and you're not using the right brush, it's not gonna look right, it's not gonna look good and you're gonna get discouraged and you're gonna be like, I can't do this. And that's you know, not really you, that's your brush. You're just using the wrong brush and you just don't know. And so what I did is I just got a bunch of different kind of brushes, a bunch of different kind of sizes, and I just experimented with diff different ones. And, um, you know, I have like kind of more expensive brushes and then I have cheap brushes. And so I would recommend if you are starting out a beginner painter, um, to just go to the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store and get the cheap brushes um, to start, just practice. Or you can get some, um, like a pack of them on Amazon for pretty cheap and, um, you know, use those. The only disclaimer I would say with the cheap brushes is that they fall apart easily. That's why you might want to get a package of them because a lot of them 
the bristles will come out and that's kind of frustrating. That's why I don't like the chip brush, which I'll talk about in a later video, but essentially it's a painting brush, like a house painting brush. This is a chip brush and the bristles when you're painting come out and it, and here one just came out now and that just is so frustrating to me. And so when you're using some of the, at least the dollar store ones, that can happen because that's happened to me. So just be aware of that. But I recommend that you get a uh, mixed media pad. There's a whole bunch on Amazon. You can get them in an art store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Um, this one is Canson. Um, it doesn't matter really the brand. Um, just make sure it's mixed media where you can paint on it with different paints, you know, acrylic, um, watercolor, and then you can also draw on it and stuff like that. So make sure it's a mixed media and not just like a one specific one. If you get like a drawing pad, that won't work with acrylic paint or any kind of paint. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but I recommend that you get this. Um, I didn't get this in the beginning and I wish I would have. So, um, this is just something to get to practice on, practice your brush strokes, practice with different paints, etc. before you really start painting on a canvas. Um, you know, canvases aren't cheap. You know, there's ways around it if you make mistakes and things like that, which I'll get to in later videos. But for now, we're just going to talk about brushes. So that's kind of my, um, you know, introduction into my own brush journey is that, you know, I really get discouraged because I'm trying to follow, you know, some different uh, YouTube videos and they don't really tell you what brushes they're using or, you know, things like that. And so I get discouraged because I'm trying to copy what they're doing and I'm not doing it right. And so what I've figured out is I'm not using the right brushes. So anyway, there's my little, like, my cellular story. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wanted to just really briefly, I have this information written um, in a post as well. Um, I think in this group and in, in this page and in my group. But I also wanted to um, kind of just give you the three different types of brushes. Um, Typically, there is sable, which is uh, squirrel hair, uh, bristle, which is hog hair, boar hair, and then there's nylon, which is synthetic. Some synthetics do have animal hair in it, but for the most part, nowadays, they're going fully synthetic um, and trying not to do any animal hair. There's, there's a lot of artists out there who create their own paintbrushes who are trying to move towards more cruelty-free, is what they call it, brushes. But everybody has their preference. When you're painting with acrylic, synthetic is kind of the best just because of the way it paints. It's easier um, and it just, there's just, there, these ones are, are used for different things. And so, and again, this is something you should experiment with. The other kind of disclaimer I can say about paint brushes between like a cheap one and an expensive one, um, there is a difference in how they feel when you paint with them. So I recommend that you get like a, a dollar paintbrush and you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever your art store is and buy like a $5 brush and in like the um, fine art section and kind of feel paint with it paint with both of them and feel the difference and and I feel like there's a difference and so and they're also um, you know better quality and they last longer so there's a lot of benefits to the more expensive brushes but they're expensive so um, just kind of again experiment with those types of things just so you can get more familiar um, so anyway sable brushes is kind of the I think the, the paintbrush that has been used for a very long time, you know, um, and this, I, I believe the sable brushes, um, 
are more used for watercolor painting and I could be wrong with that because I haven't tried watercolor yet. So in the comments, if that's not right, let me know. Um, I know you can use a, um, you know acrylic with these as well. And usually um, when I'm searching for brushes on Amazon, you know, this would come up where it would say sable or some kind of brush. And I was like, what's sable mean? You know, like there's, there's these painting terms, but I have no idea what they are. And so that's why I kind of wanted to come on and, and kind of introduce this because when you are shopping for paint brushes, it's kind of overwhelming because there's so many different kinds. And so this is kind of the basis, okay? So squirrel brushes, or it could be like a small animal brush. Typically they're fine haired, um, again, softer so that you can do watercolor with them, acrylic, things like that. Um, the hog brush, so let me see, I think, like, um, I don't know if, if these are if these are stable for sure, because they make them now where they make them all different colors and they're not just white synthetic. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is kind of really fine you can feel the difference, it's very fine. The brushes, the like the little uh, bristles move really easily. I don't know, see if you can see that or not. I'm gonna do it kind of so it does not super blurry. So you can kind of see that. Um, I don't have a flat hog brush, but I do have one for a fan brush, which I'll talk about in a different video. But this is a hog brush, so look at the difference, kind of. I can show you. This, you know, moves really easily. And this one doesn't. This is very um, hard and just very hard, uh, thicker, essentially. It's thicker and it doesn't move as easily as this one does. So this is a hog brush, a uh, bristle brush. And basically, um, these ones are more for oil painting, um, and you can use acrylic as well. It just holds the paint better. You don't really use a sable brush for that, mostly because um, the, the oil paint, especially, is just heavier. And so these types of brushes will, will hold it better, and you can use it use it more easily. I like this type of brush, especially the fan brush. Um, to make trees with and again I'll show you that in a different video but it's just a thicker a heavier bristle brush essentially um, and there's just different things you can use with that but that's kind of what it looks like it's just a little bit more of a stiffer bristle brush and it's just made of hog so again when you're ordering on Amazon or wherever it will stay in, in, in the title hog brush or boar brush same thing with Sable, it'll say sable, blah, 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 brush. So just keep those in mind. And then for like a, the synthetic brushes, um, this one is white, but they're not always white. Um, mostly they are just synthetic. Um, again, I think some of them do have some animal hair in it, but for the most part, um, they're just, um, again, animal free. And these ones are the best, I feel like, with acrylic. They're just easier to use. Um, and you'll be able, again, to tell that if you buy these different kind of brushes and you use them and you paint with them, um, you can feel the difference. So just kind of a, a breakdown on that real quick. So that's kind of the difference on that. Um, so this is what, so that's kind of the breakdown on those. So we're going to just move on real quick to the different sizes of flat brushes. And so um, really there's three different kinds. Oh, I was going to show you this one as well. This one is a jumbo sh a size flat brush. It's a size 30 and it's a nylon one, so it's synthetic. So that's, it doesn't have to again be a white one, but it just really moves easily you know, like that. And this is more for painting larger surfaces, like larger canvases. 
um, and blending in the background. So that's what the, I use these for. But um, they're, they come in like huge sizes, honestly. Um, but I get these on Amazon. Usually they're about 10 bucks, so they're kind of expensive, but they cover a lot more um, area. And that's kind of what a flat brush mainly does. Like the basic thing that it does is that it is usually a larger, especially the larger ones, I guess, um, you can just hold more paint on it. So you can do more, you can just do like more, air, cover more area essentially. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to talk about the three different kinds of flat brushes. So um, the one that, I should do this one. The one that I use the most and that is the most common really, especially with paint parties and um, things like that, not with, uh, I don't know about professional, but um, I use this a lot. So this one is a one inch flat brush. Let me see if I can go a little closer here so you can kind of see more here. Too much, okay. So this is the, it's a one inch flat brush. I usually will use this or a three quarters flat brush, it's a little bit smaller to do all my paintings with. Um, and I use a lot, I use it for a lot of things, which I'll demonstrate in a second. So um, that's what I, this is like the most common and it's called a flat square brush um, or just a flat brush, honestly. I mean, you'll never really see it say square, um, but I'm just trying to show you the different shapes. So flat, these are all flat brushes essentially. Um, but I just want, again, flat, square, this is a flat rectangle. It just means that it's just a little bit skinnier and longer. That's all it, the difference really is. Um, but it does the same things. This is a little bit of a smaller one as far as the width, obviously, because there are bigger ones. Um, but it just means like it's a rectangle. That's really the only difference. <laughs> and then for this one, this one is called officially it's called a bright and so I kept seeing that name when I was in um, like Hobby Lobby or wherever looking at professional paintbrushes and I kept seeing bright 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 and I saw that also in some videos that I was watching on YouTube like in the supply list and I didn't know what that meant what's bright and so really all that means is a small flat brush <laughs> I was like, why doesn't it just say that? <laughs> but anyway, um, essentially, you can see that it's just, it's still a flat brush, it's just smaller. I mean, there are some better uses for it, but when you're, when you're figure, like using it, it's the same, it's a flat brush. So typically, you know, these, this kind of brush, um, is going to do the exact same thing as this kind of brush, um, essentially. It's just a smaller version. So again, it's the same thing, it's just smaller. So anyway, um, I'm going to just do a little um, demo of each one, just so you can see kind of what they do. Um, I like to use um, this brush um, for um, like when you're making a horizon line, at the, uh, like you're making like a beach scene and you're doing a horizon line, this is a good brush for that. Um, I use this brush when I make, do my gnomes. Um, I do like gnome paintings and I use this for their beard. Um, I use this to make um, like grass um, or there you can make trees with this brush. You can make flower petals with this brush. You can make leaf petals with this brush. There's so many different things you can do with the flat brush, which is why I think it's the most common um, one to use, especially when you are using more craft paint and you're doing, you know, more of the paint parties or, um, you know, a little bit more of the cartoony kind of paintings. Um, this one is just most popular, so. I have um, some paints here. <clears throat> I have blue, I have like a teal, and I have a light teal. 
And so I was just going to kind of um, just kind of do a little demo of what they each are. So I'm just going to get this wet a little bit, but you don't want it dripping or anything. It's just to get the, the brush wet. And so um, I'm just going to start with my blue here and just kind of go like this. So this brush is for blending. This is um, kind of a blending brush. And um, it's probably the best one to use for that. All the other brushes have different functions, but this is what it's mostly for, is the blending. You blend with it. So a lot of backgrounds are made with this, any type of blending you need, essentially. So you can kind of see how these are all blended together. Kind of, let's see. This paint is a little bit thinner, so I might have to do a little bit more here. But essentially you can see how I'm blending these all together. So there's kind of like a little ocean water right there. So that's blending, right? Then you can also use it um, very thinly and so that's kind of when when you're getting into um, pressure so when you're using any kind of brush you can either put a lot of pressure down or you could put little pressure down and you'll get a completely different result and so um, I'm just going to use this one and basically you make a thin line you know, lines like this. And that's where you do like the, the uh, horizon line kind of thing. Get like more of a straight line. So there's that. Um, if I did uh, more pressure, it would be like a, just a thicker line like that. So again, this is like little pressure, you know, and then thick pressure. Sure. So again, it depends on what you're painting. And then the other thing it can, I can do here, I'm just going to use this dark one again, is to use it for like grass. Same kind of thing. You're just not pushing very hard. Or you are pushing hard. And you're creating grass. Um, same thing with you can push down super hard right here and pull up and there's a leaf. Let me see if I can get closer here. You know, push down really hard and pull up. And there's another leaf, you know, things like that. You can do that as with flowers as well. Same, same kind of concept. Um, and then I also use this brush um, to make a beard. So typically when you're making a beard, you just do these little um, flicks, a bunch of little flicks, and then you just, you know, keep going. And that could be like a gnome beard, that could be a bush, that could be, you know, some kind of grass together. So again, many different ways for the flat brush. Um, you could also do um, you just, and really when you're painting, you always just want the, the paint at the tip of your brush. You really don't need it up here. There's really no need for that. Um, and so I'm going to get some paint on my brush and really what you could also do, um, you can make like little dots here. You could do like a tree, um, you do like and like I've done trees like this before where they're kind of you can kind of go like this and just kind of like that like a Christmas tree maybe you know and you just keep going down um, or you can kind of do like start at the bottom and do this And then just keep going up and up and up and up until you get to the top and do like that kind of tree. 
So there's just different things you can do. I mean, there, it's endless possibilities, really. So um, that's the flat square brush. That's, again, the one I use the most. And um, it's definitely um, very versatile. So that one's that one. And then we have the rectangle flat. So this one, this one has a longer handle. And so there's two different kind of brushes, obviously, with that. There's a short handle brush and there's a long handle brush. Short handle, it means you're, you're painting down here. You're really close to this part and you're painting and you're painting flat. You're painting on top of a, a table. Um, a long handle brush is if you were painting on a easel. And you're and you're gonna hold your paintbrush way up here, and it's just gonna be a lot of like more of a looser um, stroke, you know, a little bit more not as controlled. This is more controlled. So I'm gonna pull this up a little bit. So like um, with this brush, I'm gonna get it a little bit wet because they're just a little bit. You don't need a lot. And um, like with this one. You, I'm gonna kind of, again, have it kind of way back here. And you just kind of do these little, you make these little marks for like a background. Um, this one's just a little bit less controlled, but essentially you can see this is the what it looks like when you're painting. It's this rectangle kind of shape versus, um, when I use this one, this one is square. That's really the only difference there. Um, so this one I've just been rec recently using for more loose type of um, paintings. So I haven't really um, dabbled too much with the rectangle ones, but I'm assuming it's kind of similar you can still do the same kind of things because it still has that flat edge. You know, I don't know, because this is a rectangle one, I don't know if it's the best for blending, but it probably can because it has the same kind of function. So it still blends, you know. Let's see, grass, same kind of thing. So, you know, same, same kind of um, brush. It's just a little bit of a, it's just rectangle is the only difference really. You can still do um, that kind of background. It's just gonna look a little bit different um, with the square brush. So it's just, you just kind of do more of the, you know, like this. They're, they just look different, and that's just because it's a square and not a rectangle. That's it. And then, um, same thing with the, the bright. So the bright, um, I believe, can do more... Um, it's just like a sharper edge, so you can get into smaller places when you're painting. So these are kind of large and this is just again a smaller flat brush. It can do the exact same things but it's just smaller is essentially the, the difference. And so um, let me see here. Um, one second. So for this one again you can take it and do blending with it. I'm going to kind of go straight down here so you can see better. And we're just going to, again, blend it. And then same thing. So this is what you should do in your mixed media pad or whatever you choose. So you don't have to get a mixed media pad. You could do it on like printer paper you know, whatever you choose to do. Um, but just practice, that's the key thing, you know? So again, we're blending. Um, we can do like a little, little dots with this. 
They're just, again, this one's just more controlled because it's smaller, you know? So we can kind of do this. We can do, there's like little plants we can do, little flowers that do a bunch of dots and things like that, you know? Um, we can still do a straight line. We can do fine lines. We can do more pressure and do a thick line. We can do smaller little petals. Um, so again, it's pretty much all the same. You're just getting a smaller, it's just smaller. That's it. That's the only difference. See the difference there? Rectangle, square, small, bright. So it's really the same. You can use this for um, a gnome beard as well. It'll just be a little bit smaller, little flicks, but same. I don't know if you can use the rectangle one for the gnome beard. I haven't used that yet, but again, or this could be like a bush, you know? Um, it could just be like that. So anyway, that is my tutorial on the flat brushes. And again, the, the tutorial I did yesterday, I didn't like because I felt rushed because I had just gotten home from work. And so I just wanted to kind of redo it um, the right way and kind of show you the differences and um so anyway i just again like i said uh earlier in the video i'm gonna do uh weekly videos of different brushes so today was flat brush next week will be the round brush um and i'll just continue on until we get through all the brushes and then um kind of at the end after i've kind of gone over all the brushes you know then i will kind of you know make a a painting that includes most of the brushes so you can kind of see how they're used in the actual painting but anyway i hope everyone has a good day and thanks for joining me if you did so early in the morning here um and then again disregard that other video <laughs> and um I, I am having another um live today at three so stay tuned for that but i hope you have a good morning and i'll see you then bye